Hey backers, Rylan here. I've got some great news. We're going to be talking about the Pro today. If you've been following, as you probably know, the Galvos on the Basic Peachy Printer are an open loop system. That means they get sent a voltage and they go to wherever they go to. Uh, we design it so that they go to where they're supposed to go to, but we really don't have any feedback from it uh, because basically that gets more expensive. So one of the things we wanted to do on the Pro is go with a closed loop system. That means that somehow um, we get feedback from the Galvo to make sure that it got to the correct position. And, uh, and we've got some pretty exciting stuff going on with that. One of the things that you have to do, of course, is figure out where it is. And do you do that with an optical sensor? Do you do that with a resistive sensor? And uh, we've, had, we've ended up playing around with and probably decided on a capacitive sensor because we've, we've made it work reasonably well. The first uh, 40, 44 hours of development was amazing. And we basically have a working Galvo with feedback using capacitance. And everything's looking really hopeful. And I even have a, a new innovation that I brought to this Galvo system that I'm really excited about. It's something that can increase the speed and lower the mass of the whole assembly. And it's just very exciting, so let's, let's check it out. Here is the very first revision of a pro galvanometer for the PG printer. And what you're looking at here is basically a pin that is floating between two magnets. And I'm, I'm really quite happy with this uh, sort of innovative way to make a shaft uh, rotate. Uh, I, I didn't want to go with bearings because that adds mass to the system and complication. Um, and you have to pay uh, quite a bit of money to get high quality bearings. So <clears throat> in, in this system, the pin is, is only held in place by by the magnetism itself. You can see I can just simply remove this pin. And the pin, when put in place, snaps right into place and can rotate really freely. It rotates really, really easily. There's very little friction on that pin. And an another advantage to doing this is not only do we get low friction, but we also inherently get um, basically a brush. So electrons can flow through this, uh, through this threaded rod and onto the shaft. And I don't have to add a brush to the outer edge of the shaft, which would cause friction that we, that we don't want. So I'm very happy with the concepts here. And even though it looks, uh, it looks really quite ugly, um, I'm happy with that too because it means I didn't waste any time getting something to look good before it works great. And this is actually working great, uh, despite how uh, thrown together it is. So since it worked great, I moved on to making a second revision. And here it is right here. And here you can see this one has that capacitive uh, feedback foil plate. So basically, Capacitance is a function of the distance between this plate and these copper pads. And so when this rotates, it changes, it changes the distance it is from uh, two of the pads versus the other two pads. And that changing capacitance is what we read to find out what is the position of our mirror. With that information, we can drive the coil just the right amount to change the position to just where we want. And so that's basically how the Pro uh, is going to work. And let me, just, uh, let me just demonstrate how low friction this system is. I'm just going to blow some air uh, with, this, with this little pipette. And that will cause it to spin. And you'll see that it spins down very slowly, despite the fact that there's really no mass to keep it going. So there can't be much friction uh, in the system.
And so you can see just how long it takes to spin down, despite that it has so little mass to keep it spinning. And that's, that's really promising. It means that I've got the friction in the system nice and low. It's great to have some new hardware that really focused on the ideal situation. So moving forward, what we need to do is create a PID system, which is basically something that takes feedback and decides to do something with it, to get into the correct position with feedback. And a PID system, I mean, it stands for proportional, integral, and derivative. But those words, I, I, I don't know how old the, the, the you know, acronym PID is, but it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And I've had to make uh, an analogy so that I can kind of understand just exactly what a PID system is. So let me share that analogy with you. So uh, again, uh, it's just sort of like a thought experiment. And if we make everything an extreme, then we can all experience sort of what this mirror assembly is having to go through and having to do, and what this PID system really is. So I'm going to change the mirror assembly into something that has the same problems but completely amplified. So instead of a small mass, we'll go with a really large mass. And instead of something that's very small in scale and foreign to us, we'll go with something that's big and normal to us, something that possibly we've all, all experienced. <clears throat> so I'm going to pick a school bus. I, I like the school bus. So let's say you're a school bus driver. <clears throat> and I give you a task. And your task is to, as quickly as you can, from a stop, drive to that place over there. We'll say place A. And place A is, say, uh, 100 feet from here. So the first thing you'll do is look at where you are and say, you know, I'm not moving at all. I need to speed up. So you hit the gas. And of course, you need to get there as fast as possible as so you hit the gas as hard as you can. <clears throat> and that's the first step that our PID system would make. It would say, you know, I need to go over there and I'm not moving yet, so I need to put the power on, put full power to the coil. And then the next thing you'll do is check very often, perhaps constantly checking, <clears throat> okay, how, how long until I get there? How long until I get there? How quickly am I getting there? And that's exactly what an analog circuit that we're building, that Scott's building, is doing. It's constantly uh, set up to sort of use uh, math caused by the way we've wired the circuit to say, how soon am I getting there? And as a school bus driver, the next thing you're going to realize is I'm getting there really fast and if I don't hit the brakes, I'm going to go past there and there'll be nothing I can do to stop it. So the analog circuit does just that. It sort of says my speed is so high and my distance is so close that I need to hit the brakes. And, it's, and in our situation here, the analogy of hitting the brakes is analogous to reversing the current actually you know, trying to go backwards from the direction we were first going. So as we get close with a high speed, we'll reverse the current and actually hit the brakes, <clears throat> and our speed will drop, and the analog circuit, just like the school bus driver would, land right on the spot. And that's exactly what the circuit will do with electricity, is it will just land right on the spot that we need to get to. And that's basically what a PID controller does. So to wrap things up, I'm basically just really excited to be working on the Pro. Thanks for joining us. Talk to you next time.